aggressive rear wings. They're becoming increasingly popular on serious race cars and they're made using various techniques. This video will show you how to make your own fiberglass wings using a two-piece flanged mould. And this technique will work on a wide variety of wing shapes. On a visit to a mate of mine who also makes his own race cars, he showed me that he had these foam wing blanks gathering dust in his garage. So I was lucky enough to be able to use these as the basis for my die. But what do you do if you haven't got these? You can buy or have these foam blanks cut for you if you Google uh, foam profile cutters in your area. But what do you do if you haven't got one of those? Well, you can make uh, a copy of this yourself, a similar sort of thing, using sheet metal. It's fairly easy to bend sheet aluminium round a steel tube and make your own metal die. But use the lightest, thinnest aluminium you can find. I've already fully sculpted and sealed my foam wing die and moulded one side. just gel coated the top half of my fiberglass wing mould and I've got this 90 degree edge here which fiberglass cloth does not like taking up. What can tend to happen is the cloth doesn't get right into that edge. You, you, you push it in uh, just in hand laying and then it's in places it'll work its way out and you get gaps between your cloth and the gel coat and because there's no strength in gel coat by itself bits of this edge will break off. I won't have this problem when I'm making wings, copies of wings in the mould, rather it's just an issue with making the mould itself where I need to get this edge properly formed. There's a couple of ways you can cure this. One is to put um, strands of fibreglass cloth woven rovings along. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some fairing compound <coughs> in there and, cha <coughs> and change that to a 45 degree edge. If you haven't got fairing compound, you can just get a bit of carbog and uh, uh, make it a little bit smoother with poly resin and put a, a run of that in there. That'll cure that problem.
ready to bring the two parts of my rear wing together. I could just remove them from their moulds and glue the two parts together as a hollow structure. But a wing as big and as aggressive as this needs to be as strong as possible to handle the stresses the downforce it creates at high speed will generate. The best way to maximise its strength and to keep it light is to fill it with pouring foam. This could be done by just taping and clamping the two halves together and pouring in the foam. But expanding foam creates incredible pressure, more than enough to push the two halves apart just as it sets. So to eliminate any possibility of that, the two wing halves will remain in their moulds and be bolted together and then the foam will be poured in. When filling a wing like this with foam, don't get mistaken and get the foam in a tube from a hardware store. That's builder's foam and it only expands about five times its volume. This is pouring foam, it's specifically designed for what I'm going to use it for. There's a whole lot of different formulas but basic pouring foam, um, two part ISO and poly. This will expand 20 to 25 times its volume, got incredible strength. Uh, and it's a great adhesive. The only downside with it is it's highly flammable so you can't use it in a car anywhere where there's risk of fire but in a, inside a wing like this it's fine. Uh, make sure you use a clean container. How much do you use and how do you know how much to use? Well basically by experimentation and I keep a, a logbook of the jobs that I do so I can remember uh, and just go back and find out how much, how much foam I used. Use a whisk, uh, you need to really stir this stuff up well. A cordless drill with a, with a piece of wire on it like that is way better than trying to do it with a stick. Um, and you mix it until the bubbles start to come to the surface. If you're too late as you're pouring it, it'll be expanding. Uh, if you're too early, well, you won't mix your foam uh, properly enough. But basically, if you, if you under mix it and pour it too early, it'll go in the, in the job and then expand by itself. So let's have some fun with this stuff and see. You're not going to be able to see it rising in the mould, I think, because uh, the wing's opaque and the mould's opaque. And I wasn't going to make a wing and a mould in clear just so you could get a buzz out of seeing the foam come up. But you'll see it come out the top, that's for sure. Although I've got a really good fit on my mould ends, I'm going to pay the insurance against having the foam leak out because it will always find the easiest way out and it will always leak. So what I'm going to do is put some tape over this joint just to give myself a little bit of insurance against uh, unwanted leakage. Beware of the danger of sticking your head right over the top of this and looking down into the hole because this stuff gives off toxic fumes. So uh, you don't need breathing apparatus but you don't want your nose right over the top of that. You can see how much good pouring foam expands. I poured almost everything out of this container into the wing and it was barely covering the bottom of the uh, milk jug. And look at it now, it's halfway up the sides. Just from that tiny little bit that was left in the bottom. see how the foam has penetrated right the way across this wing 
I poured it in about there, it's hit the bottom, just gone out and then gone up the wing. I've hollowed this out in preparing it for uh, filling in the end and putting a couple of mounting uh, rivnuts nuts in there so that it can be bolted and adjusted easily. The question remains, how strong is this wing?